Hey guys, as promised, we have a quick little tutorial about what I call macros. Um, I am going to do a little vocabulary work here. Um, so a lot of times when people talk about macros, they are talking about the third party uh, macros that are done to automate characters. That is not what we are doing here. Um, I cannot stress that enough. Nothing in this is third party. This is all stuff built into the game to help make the game sometimes a little bit simpler, a little more communicative, um, funner, things like that. So this is all in-game stuff. So let's get to it. Um, in making these button macros, there are three four screens really that are the most important screens. Five, five, I guess, five, fine. Okay. One, your hotkeys, because the buttons you make are going to go on hotkeys. Uh, two is your chat, because that's where stuff's gonna get communicated to. Three, your actions. Four, uh, for casters, your spells. And five, uh, your, oh, there it is. Uh, come on, come on, thank you. Your target window. All right. I'm going to target myself. Okay. So, you can make buttons that will cast spells for you and will communicate things to people in your chat down here. And they're really easy. They are hella useful, especially in uh, groups and raids. Um, you can use these as a healer. Uh, you can use these as a puller. Um, you can use these as a tank. Uh, as a tank, obviously, you're not going to have uh, spells. Um, instead, you would just have a button and that button communicates to everybody who you're attacking. Um, and then uh, if you're crowd control, which usually that's gonna be the enchanter, uh, you can use it to indicate what creatures you're mesmerizing so that people know not to mess with those creatures or not to do AOE spells that are gonna hit those creatures. So as you can tell, in a lot of situations like groups or raids that can be big, these buttons can be really, really useful. So how do you make them? Well, that's gonna be your action window. Um, your action window always defaults to your basic main page actions. Uh, you have your ability. If you have not set these up before, um, you can see I already set up my Forge and Sense heading. You just right click on it, choose the skill that you wanna to set to it, and that's it. The button is set. Um, you can left click and move it down to your hotbar. Uh, left click, hold down, move it to your hotbar. Left, left, click, left click again to place it. Real easy. Um, the same thing with your combats page. Um, if you're a melee class, these are going to be the different skills that you get as you level up and train them. But the one that we really, really care about today is the socials page. These are all your basic socials. Um, they will tell you a lot of things. Time is the time of day. It tells you the uh, game time, that is Noreth time, and it tells you the real world time. Played is how long uh, you have played. So if somebody wants to know how long you've had your character um, and you don't remember, you can hit played and it will show uh, when your character was created, how long you have played it, like how long it's existed overall, and then also, oh, from in that time frame, how long you've actually played. I'm not going to display it because I hit it earlier and it made me feel old. So, um, if you go to the next page over using these arrows, you get your first set of blank ones, and these are the ones we care about. So, <clears throat> you're going to right click on a blank tile, 
and it's going to bring up this little window. First thing you want to do, because you want to be able to identify your button, is you want to name it. We're going to do a heel button, so we're naming it heel. Different people will have different ways that they want to do this. Some people like to cast and then say. Some people like to say and then cast. I'm actually going to do one that combines that. I'm going to do a say, cast, say. Um, so it's going to be my text of who I'm healing, my heal, and then my text again of who I'm healing as kind of a reminder. Um, it's nice. It's attention getting. It's informative. There we go. Um, even though you have five lines here, in my experience, um, I have had uh, the macro skip over lines. And it has to do with um, how ticks work in the game, lag, things like that. So what I always do is I always will skip a line uh, between each command. So my first is going to be my speech command. And all you have to do is just type out. You don't have to type slash G or slash say or anything like that um, because your chat window has certain defaults. Um, and you can actually set your chat window to a default. And I'll show you real quick how to do that. Um, this is important because some groups will want you to do this and raids will usually want you to do this. If you come down here, this is the line that you type in. If you right click on it, you can go to channel and you can actually change the default channel for it. Um, so that's how you would do that. I am keeping mine to safe right now. Um, that's really only important to know um, for situations of uh, raids and groups. And that's because those are situations where you might need to be able to communicate to people who are going to be far away from you and say will only show up for people who are close by. So, um, but when you're doing things like healing, pulling, um, uh, doing crowd control, you're talking to people who are going to be right around you anyway. So it doesn't matter. Um, so our first line is going to be uh, our text. Um, you can make this as colorful as you want. Everybody does this a little bit different. Um, I'm going to do just a nice simple one. Now, <clears throat> you might go, but how am I going to indicate who I'm healing? There's a real simple command for that. Obviously, you're targeting somebody when you're healing them. So, you want it to say who you're targeting, and that is percent %t. Um, if you want to draw a little more attention to it, so it stands out a little bit more, um, you can, before you put uh, percent %t, you can go healing, some dots, and then some brackets, a space, percent %t, another space, some more brackets, and then some more dots. Um, it's just something that stands out a little bit more from the normal text that's going to be there. So then you're going to, like I said, skip a line and then come down here. And this is going to be your cast command. And this is really hard to remember. I know, I know, but I have faith in you all. Forward slash cast and then space. Now you're gonna come over here to your spells. And you'll notice each one has a number. I always put my heal spell as my first spell. So mine is going to be cast one. If you're doing crowd control, whatever space you have your mesmerize in is the number that you're going to put there. Um, if you're not like me, where you put your heals in your top slot, it'll be whatever slot you have your heal in. Everybody's different. And then I'm going to come down here to my last line. I'm skipping lines again. And I'm going to type in my text. That's going to be said. I healed you. You. 
And I like to make this a little more flavorable in the name of Tonare. Because that's, I'm a druid, I'm a wood elf, my god's Tonari. Um, Once you have that complete, you're going to hit accept. I always suggest testing it. And I have myself targeted, as you can see here. And if you look down at my chat window, healing, Tatiana. I healed you, Tatiana, in the name of Tonari. And then all I'm going to do is grab this and I'm going to put it on my hotbar. Uh, for whatever button I want my heal button to be. So I put it on two. So when I go to my keyboard and I press two, I cast my heal. It tells everybody around me or in my group. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I go to channel, I change it to group. When I do it, my, my spell hasn't reset yet, but when I do it, um, you can see it says telling your party uh, healing Tatiana. Um, and if you're in a group, it'll do that. So, and it'll do the same if you're in a raid and you set it to raid, etc., etc. Um, if I'm just power leveling, then I'll keep my stuff to say because I can't be in a group with somebody I'm power leveling. They won't get XP. And there you go. Um, and whatever you want to set them for. So, um, I have my snare. Um, so I'm going to do pull, and it's going to be the same thing, pulling, and I want to make sure people know what it is. So we're going to do our dots and brackets, space percent T, um, again I've got to find the number, so number five, what is very important is that when you do this, that uh, you are consistent in where you put your spells. Uh, this is, these buttons are why my heal spell is always in first position. Um, so I have, I usually have like two or three buffs and then my snare spell. Uh, and you can come into your button anytime and you can change that number if you have, you know, change where your spell is. Just the reason that you want to do that is because you don't want to accidentally hit your button and then you're casting snare on a guard and then you're dead. <laughs> so um, I pulled percent T. Please kill it before it kills me. I hit accept, and now I have my pull command. I'm not going to, am I going to cast snare on myself? I don't want to cast snare on myself. Um, all right. So, uh, if my, if my soother was somebody that I could cast, a, that I could cast a, uh, a harmful spell on, then you would see my spell cast. Uh, Oh, I can't cast judgmental spells here. Um, but if I could cast snare spells, you would see my snare cast. You would see that uh, happen. And then whatever I was pulling would be heading our way. And please, God, kill it because I'm not a tank. Um, so that is your basics of setting up buttons. Now, there's also something else really neat that you can do. Uh, you can set up actions to happen automatically when you are moving around. And you can do it, again, using in-game commands, uh, in-game processes, in-game tools. So, automated, but not illegally automated. Um, you're going to want to have your buttons. I like to do this with Forge. And then a button I have to create for myself, uh, which is to auto inventory. And auto inventory, it's a real simple command. 
It's just forward slash auto inventory, all one word, and then accept. And you might ask yourself, what is the point here? Well, I'm about to show you. So I set these as my last two buttons over here because I'm probably not going to need them for anything else, to be perfectly honest. Um, Druids get a nice little uh, skill called Forage, and you want to work it up as high as you can, as fast as you can, um, because you will use it to collect food. You will also use it to collect other things, and some of those things you will collect are quest items. Um, Druids get this uh, skill, uh, Rangers get this skill, and I think something else does, but I don't remember what right now. Um, but you can also do this with your sense heading. Um, uh, there's a, a few other things that you can do this with. Um, so your sense heading being one of these. Um, I don't really suggest doing it with track or fish. Um, it doesn't really work good for any of these other skills, but it is great for working up your forage and working up your sense heading. And your auto inventory keeps you from having to constantly do this when you finally forage something. Now, you wanna do this automatically when you're moving around. Okay, your movement keys most likely, um, if you're using the defaults, are going to be W for forward, S for back, and then A and D to turn side to side, uh, Q and E will strafe. Um, so when you're walking around and moving, uh, you're going to be hitting your uh, A and D uh, keys from time to time. And now you're about to put them to use. And here's how you're going to do it. Uh, you're going to hit the EQ button up here and you're going to go to options. Once you do that, uh, you're uh, usually it's going to be on movement um, or whatever you're messing with last, if you're messing with it. Um, and you'll notice here, movement. Uh, it is best if you do not have it set up where your uh, turning is A and D, which is your uh, move left and move right. Uh, if it's not already set that way, go ahead and set it that way. Um, that is just best practice for having this work. You are then going to come to hot bar one because that's what this is. This is hot bar one down here. Uh, you will notice that hot bar one has all of your buttons labeled. 10 and 11, these last two, or I'm sorry, uh, I'm sorry, 11 and 12, these last two are minus and equal. You're about to change that. Now, when you change it, they're going to be red. Don't worry about it. The only thing that the red indicates is that uh, something else already has that button. And sometimes that can keep those buttons from working correctly. In this case, it won't. So this is one of those times where it's gonna show red and you don't care. You're gonna come over here to 11. Uh, if you left click on it, it's gonna say press the key and you're gonna press A. And you come over here to the equal sign it's gonna say press the key when you left click it, and you're gonna press D. Like I said, they're red. This is one of those times it's not going to affect their usefulness. Uh, once you do that, just close the window. You'll notice down here, instead of being minus and equal, they now say A and D. So here I am, I'm wandering around. Um, I'm turning left, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm turning right. I know my directions, I promise. Um, I don't have anything on my mouse cursor, so I don't have anything to inventory. Um, so it has no effect. But when I turn left, I forage. And look, I picked up something. And now I inventoried it. And that's it. Um, if I'm wanting to work up my sense heading skill, then I will just left click and hold down my sense heading and I will put it here instead of my forage. And like I said, I can take away my auto inventory from there if I want, because um, it doesn't matter. I am moving around and every time I turn left, 
I am hitting my sense heading. I can also do this twice. And then no matter what way I'm having to turn, I know I'm always hitting my, hints, my sense heading and I'm working up my sense heading skill. So nice, simple way to work up these skills. Um, it's great. I highly recommend doing it. I'm going to put my forage and my auto inventory back there. Um, by the way, the reason I picked up two items when I foraged is because of an alternate advancement. Um, that's something that I'll talk about eventually on my uh, necro leveling guide. So, but anyway, this has been Eliana. Um, I will see you guys later. Um, if you have not yet, please go over to Twitch and follow me. Um, I regularly stream EverQuest and some other games too. And you can always, of course, uh, find my streams after the fact there or here on YouTube. Have fun, guys. Bye.